we know that a college education is key to economic success for individuals. It's also part of the national success strategy in the knowledge economy. Ironically, the United States set the pace in college graduation rates for most of the 20th century. Then suddenly, in the late 1970s, we sloughed off, we flattened out. And as the knowledge economy becomes more central to the overall economy, we're falling behind. The biggest waste in colleges and universities today is the low graduation rate. Only half of the people who start at a college or university finish with a degree. Many young people begin their college experience at a community college. Among them, only 15% ever get a degree. When looking at the slowdown in college graduation rates, many people look to high school and say the students just aren't well enough prepared. Fortunately, the National Center for Educational Statistics has been collecting data on this going back to the 1960s. Students today are actually better prepared for college work than they were back in the 1960s. On average, they take an extra year of lab science, they take an extra year of foreign language, they're taking more English, so much so that they're taking more than four years of English in high school. The real question for me is, who's failing here, the students or the colleges? In his first address to Congress back in 2009, President Obama articulated a goal of getting half of young Americans a college degree. Having looked at the data, I say we can't get there from here. The colleges lack the capacity to actually educate half of America's youth today. A few years ago, economists John Bound and Sarah Turner published an article called The Cohort Squeeze. What they found was that when the number of 18 to 20 year olds goes up, the college graduation rate goes down. Meanwhile, when the 18 to 20 year old population shrinks, the graduation rate goes up. The number of degrees doesn't change over time, but the rate is a function of how many students there are, how many young people there are. When we look at the data on the selective leading public universities in each state, admission rates are falling at all the big state systems. That's characteristic of a system that is operating at capacity. We either have to build more colleges and universities to increase our capacity, or we have to be more efficient in educating the young people in the colleges and universities we do have. To sort out whether it's the students or the colleges, we can compare the middle ability students at the top universities with the top students at the middle universities. This gives us insight into what students bring with them to college and what colleges and universities provide in the way of educational experiences once the students arrive. High achieving students who went to middle range universities had the middle range dropout rate typical of those colleges and universities. Meanwhile, when struggling students beat the odds and got into top universities, they also had those high graduation rates typical of the top universities. The evidence actually shows remarkably that the students in the middle of the ability pool are the ones who get the most out of a college degree. Think of it this way. For the kids at the top, the choice is, do I invent the next Facebook before or after I graduate? Whereas for that kid in the middle of the pack, the choice is between managing the local Coke bottling plant or driving a truck out of it. That study identified the endowment rate as the deciding factor because not only were the top universities more selective, they also had more resources that they could put into the educational experience. This works on the financial aid side in an obvious way. They can focus on academics if they have sufficient financial aid. If they don't, they have to take a part-time job and that detracts from academics. Endowment also helps provide academic services. Colleges and universities hire professionals that help students see the clear path through the university, and they invest in their website and their curriculum development to make it transparent so that students can get through. We aren't all born knowing how you get from freshman dorm to the graduation line. It has to be shown to us. Students drop out when they run out of time and money. They don't lose their aspiration for a college degree they just hit a point where they can't keep taking loans and they can't keep putting off starting work. And when they leave, they seldom come back. Some universities have the endowment it takes 
to produce success. Their students get the student services they need. Others are struggling. Graduation rates have fallen as state support has fallen off. In order to support those struggling universities, we're going to have to find a supplement to those state funds. It's not clear to me where that money will come from if states and the federal government don't step up. If America's colleges and universities are going to educate half of the population, we're going to have to find the money somewhere or else we won't be competitive in the 21st century economy.